Israel's war on Gaza has caused major damage to both the built and natural environments. Toxic chemicals and explosives rain down on the Strip. Sanitation and water treatment systems are destroyed. How much environmental damage is the war causing? This is Inside Story. Welcome to the program. I'm Adrian Finnegan. Palestinians continue to suffer in Israel's brutal war on Gaza. Tens of thousands killed and injured with the toll rising daily. One of the most intense bombing campaigns since World War II will leave not just a legacy of grief for Gaza's people, but one of lasting physical damage to the environment in which they live. The collapse of water and sanitation systems and Israeli threats to flood the tunnels underneath Gaza could be catastrophic for freshwater supplies and reserves. Thousands upon thousands of Israeli and Western-supplied bombs dropped on Gaza bring not just death, but a toxic legacy from explosive chemicals. Dust and debris from destroyed buildings pollute the air and ground. Israel's military offensive in Gaza is leaving a new layer of toxic chemicals in its soil, adding to those left behind after the many wars that it's waged before. We'll be discussing the environmental cost of the war with our guests in just a few moments. But first, a report from Kara Legg. Military vehicles, the production of weapons and equipment, and supply chains. The UN says Israel dropped 42 bombs an hour on Gaza during the first few weeks of war, damaging or completely destroying more than 60% of homes. It's also attacked water treatment systems and polluted water supplies, leading to sewage being dumped directly into the sea. Now there are reports the Israeli military is pumping seawater into the network of underground tunnels used by Hamas. By flooding the foundation of Gaza, it means adding more uh, problems to the already existing problem. The earth is very soft. By being soft, it is detrimental for the civilians to have all this flood under their knees by the Israelis who are very much aware what they are doing, but they really don't care. Human rights groups have also accused Israel of using white phosphorus. The toxic substance not only causes severe burns, but can remain in the soil for years, causing long-term damage. If you have heavy industry bombed, then you have all the pollution in heavy industry that gets released into the environment in a very uncontrolled way. That, that can leave residual pollution for decades. Every aspect of life in Gaza is affected by some form of pollution. And with the start of the rainy season, the threat to people and the environment from disease, acid rain and contaminated water is only set to worsen. After 16 years under Israeli siege, Palestinians have been forced to adapt. About 60% of the population used solar energy to power their homes. But Israeli bombing has damaged or destroyed tens of thousands of buildings, many with solar panels. It will take years to clean up the military pollution and contamination of the soil, water and air. And the carbon emissions from its reconstruction will come at a cost to all forms of life in Gaza. Kara Legg, Al Jazeera, for Inside Story. Well, along with allegations of genocide, Israel is also accused of committing ecocide of devastating proportions in Gaza. Broadly defined, ecocide means mass damage or destruction to the environment to the detriment of life, committed with full knowledge of the risks. The term was first used during the Vietnam War by scientists concerned at the US government's use of millions of litres of toxic herbicide, Agent Orange, which caused widespread birth deformities. The chemical was used to clear forests that gave Viet Cong fighters cover and food. Only a few countries define ecocide as a crime. Since Russia's war in Ukraine, there's been pressure in Europe to make it a war crime, which could be tried at the International Criminal Court. So let's bring in our guests for today's discussion. From Ramallah in the occupied West Bank, we're joined by Nada Majdalani, Palestinian director of EcoPeace Middle East. 
The organization brings together Jordanian, Palestinian and Israeli environmentalists to promote shared protection of their environmental heritage. From Rafa in southern Gaza, Marwan Badawil, who uh, heads the Gaza Program Coordination Unit of the Palestinian Water Authority. In other words, he's the engineer who oversees water supplies to Gaza. And also in Ramallah, Hadil Ikhmais, Director General of the Climate Change Section of the Palestinian Authority's Environment Quality Authority. She's just represented Palestine at uh, COP28 in Dubai. A warm welcome to you all. Uh, Nada, let's uh, begin with you. Can we confidently describe what Israel is doing uh, in Gaza with its bombing as ecocide? Yes, thank you. Um, uh, thank you for, for, for hosting us. And uh, I would say yes. Uh, what uh, what is happening at the moment is uh, is an ecocide. Uh, definitely, the environmental outlook uh, at the moment uh, is exacerbating day by day. Uh, the uh, original condition before October seventh and uh, before uh, uh, the aggressions on Gaza Strip uh, have already been uh, in a very dire situation. Already, Gaza had suffered from. Uh, uh, polluted uh, underground water, where 97% of the uh, aquifer uh, was uh, not suitable for human consumption. Uh, we were speaking about uh, tremendous uh, problems regarding uh, solid uh, waste and, uh, and wastewater treatment due to the uh, shortages of fuel um, and, and several other issues. However, uh, at the moment, the situation has been uh, uh, grave and exacerbated. Uh, we have uh, no information whatsoever about uh, the situation in the south, uh, in the north, in terms of the amount of destruction of infrastructure uh, facilities that support uh, water supply and uh, sanitation. Uh, the situation in the south is uh, also uh, in, a, in a very critical situation where 1.9 million uh, people are actually uh, displaced uh, and, and confined in a very uh, small uh, surface area, uh, which means we are at the verge of an environmental catastrophe in terms of the spread of uh, pandemic disease, uh, the accumulation of, uh, of uh, uh, corpses uh, in the street, uh, also from the north and the middle areas, uh, that would uh, okay. actually also uh, provide uh, uh, susception to, to uh, pandemic diseases. Um, we're also looking at now we have uh, the raining season has already started. Uh, the flooding is, uh, as you might have seen already from uh, Jabalia refugee camp and some areas, there are videos that are horrifying okay. of, uh, of water uh, flooding. Nada, Nada, I'm, I'm, so, Nada I'm sorry to interrupt. We'll, we'll come on, we'll, we'll talk some more in, in, in just a moment, but I want to give our other guests uh, a chance to have, have their say too. Marwan, um, describe for us the impact of Israel's bombing on Gaza's water sanitation and hygiene infrastructure. Uh, where did Gazans get their water before the war? Uh, was it safe to drink, given that Gaza has been subjected to Israeli bombing many times in the past? And, and how was sewage dealt with? In what state is the sewage infrastructure now? Uh, thank you for uh, this opportunity. In fact, before the war, uh, Gaza Strip depends mainly on the groundwater and limited percentage of desalinated water from the seawater desalination plants and purchased uh, small quantities from the Israeli side through three connections. Before the war, almost around 35% uh, of the population of Gaza Strip they could use the tap water for drinking and for other uh, usage, but 65% uh, of the population, they receive salty water. Uh, for the kids, for the kids, the Palestinian in, in Gaza, they uh, over pump the groundwater, and this is make a seawater intrusion, which elevate the level of the uh, senility in addition of for the case before the Palestinian Authority came to and controlled Gaza and the West Bank, the majority of the Gazians, they used septic tanks as a sewage disposal method. And this is uh, make a lot of pollutant, mainly the nitrate, to infiltrate for the case to the groundwater, which resulted in 
97% of the aquifer in Gaza was unusable. It cannot be used by human being. And despite all this uh, I mean, the facts, the Palestinian Water Authority and the Palestinian Authority, they did and start their uh, strategic planning to rehabilitate the aquifer and from one side and to supply the potable water for the Gazians. The strategy and the plans uh, put in uh, action since, 19, uh, since 2015 and by the end of 2022 we reached to the percentage that 35 percent of the population okay. mainly okay. in uh, Khan Yunis, uh, part of Western Gaza and Rafa to use it. Now, nowadays, the uh, destruction happened in the sewage network mainly and the shortage of the fuel and the shortage of electricity left most of the bombing station out of use and this is uh, make the opportunity for sewage water to flood in the streets and create a bad environment which could impact the public health and the environment as well. Okay. In the but, last two days... Uh, Marwan, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Marwan. Marwan, can you, uh, just very briefly, if Israel carries through on its threat to flood the tunnel network, which runs under Gaza, uh, with, with seawater, what impact would that have on, uh, on the, the, the water infrastructure? Yeah. And now, the, if they will pump these huge quantities of seawater underneath the Gaza, that means, uh, first of all, uh, there's an opportunity that this water by the ends will infiltrate to the groundwater, and this is will pollute the groundwater with more seawater, and this is could damage the aquifer to a, a, a limit that couldn't be reversible in the coming decades. The second part, that there's a, a, the, the structure of the soil in Gaza is a sandy soil, and the, the, these layers of sandy layers, they could collapse under the pressure of these huge quantities of water. And this is will create a chance for the buildings and for the infrastructure underneath to be collapsed and destructed. So not only they will impact the aquifer and they will damage the aquifer for decades, but also they create an opportunity to collapsing buildings, streets, under uh, infrastructure under the streets in, in, in the uh, areas. Hadil, uh, Israel has for many years controlled Gaza's energy supplies. Uh, out of necessity, Gazans have, have had to find alternative sources of power, solar energy, of course, being one of them. What, what impact has the war had on Gaza's energy infrastructure? Um, thank you for this question. Actually, uh, Gaza is under siege since almost uh, 20 years ago, and uh, this secures all of the resources, natural resources, energy resources. Uh, so there is a problem already present before the war and this genocide on Gaza. And imagine the situation after this genocide that all the investments that have been done during the, ten, the last 10 years were all destructed and massive destructed. A lot of solar panels and solar uh, initiatives and renewable energy investments uh, provided by the government or the private sector or NGOs for small projects or or uh, for uh, for certain areas in Gaza. Most of them are destroyed and by and totally destructed or partially destructed by the uh, by the uh, Israeli um, uh, strikes on Gaza. Plus uh, the fuels uh, that the, that. Uh, um, uh, operate all the, uh, the, the the water treatment, the desalination units, all of the region or all the, the, the city has, has been shut down and the, and the lockdown and the siege also uh, uh, prevent those amounts uh, of, of energy resources to, uh, to, to, operation, to operation and, uh, um, and uh, to enable people to, to have the facility from energy and their energy resources. So this uh, basically, this war has 
renders all of the environment and life aspects in Palestine and energy security, food security, water security, all the environment uh, components are hindered and endangered uh, from these uh, massive destructive that okay. uh, Gaza has, has been uh, since the 7th of October. Nada, I, I was reading a, a piece at, at aljazeera.com in which you were quoted as saying that the war has destroyed every aspect of Gaza's environment. Uh, certainly, I mean, um, we are seeing a collective amount of, of threats to, uh, to the environment and to the public health. Uh, first of all, let's uh, not forget that uh, uh, Israel is utilizing um, um, uh, chemical weapons like uh, white phosphorus. Uh, this is uh, completely uh, not only from a humanitarian perspective uh, that is uh, uh, dangerous to, to the uh, human, uh, humans that are bombarded, uh, but as well this is affecting uh, the uh, air pollution. Uh, the residues from uh, white phosphorus bombs uh, is now in the atmosphere. Uh, with the rainy season, we uh, will expect that these re residues will uh, precipitate uh, with the rain, uh, which actually, unfortunately, many people now are collecting to utilize for drinking. This is a grave situation where people might be at the moment drinking unsafe water that they are collecting personally from the streets, from even plastic sheets. Uh, and, and this is uh, one, one part that is uh, worrying. The other part that uh, also uh, people are drinking salty water that is untreated, as uh, Hadil had mentioned, uh, that small-scale desalination units are not operating because of the lack of fuel. Therefore, uh, people are drinking salty water, and this is very dangerous to even people who have kidney and, and uh, liver diseases. Uh, the uh, drinking of polluted uh, uh, water with uh, sewage elements and uh, waterborne diseases uh, is very high. At the moment, we're seeing a rising and rocketing numbers of uh, children who are suffering diarrhea uh, and, uh, and bloody diarrhea, uh, as well as uh, there's a danger of uh, parasitic uh, infections, as well as uh, 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 hepatitis, uh, uh, chickenpox, uh, we are seeing those uh, uh, rocketing numbers in the shelters. Mawan, uh, you spoke about the fact that, that even before the war, 65 per cent of, of people in Gaza didn't have access to, to safe drinking water. Uh, what will it take to repair Gaza's water infrastructure? How long will it take? Who should pay for its repair? And, and will Gaza's water supply ever be fully safe, given the damage that, that, uh, that has, has been inflicted upon it? Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, till this moment, there is no assessment, uh, accurate assessment to the damage that happened to the water facilities and the infrastructure related to the water and sanitation. Since uh, most of the areas are not accessible, so the accurate assessment didn't take, uh, took place till today, but from the news and from the, what we are seeing in the uh, north and in the Gaza city and even in the middle and in the south, uh, the Palestinian Authority with the inter international donors, communities and the world supported the Palestinians. In the last 10 years, around 750 million US dollars had been spent to rehabilitate and to upgrade the water and wastewater infrastructure and sector within the Gaza Strip. Now, uh, the majority of these facilities, uh, we have uh, one dissemination plant in the north, which is out of use, it's damaged. The level of the damage cannot be assessed remotely. Uh, the infrastructure, uh, piping system, the networks are damaged. Uh, groundwater wells, there is so many, are impacted by the, uh, from the uh, war activities in the surrounding areas. Uh, we don't have accurate information about the uh, north uh, wastewater treatment plant in the east part of uh, Jabalia. We don't have information, clear, accurate information about the wastewater treatment plant in the east of Khanyunis city. Uh, uh, but the majority of the infrastructure in the north and in Gaza had been impacted to a level of, of uh, so. Uh, considering the uh, level of the damages, uh, we think that 
at least we need uh, months till we assess all the infrastructure and the water facilities and to account the damage happened. And we believe that we need years to fix the water facilities and the water networks and the water supply system and the wastewater. Uh, I, I would just want to uh, make a comment re related to the water shortage and uh, its impact on the public health, mainly on the shelters. According to the WHO standards, at the minimum there should be around 30 liter per capita per day. Till this moment, we didn't succeed to reach this uh, quantities. The majority of the people receive less than 20 liter per capita per day. And according to the UN records, there is around 400,000 cases of diseases that are related to the water or the shortage of the water. Skin diseases, there are uh, hepatitis, uh, a lot of uh, cases that have been recorded in the shelters. And this is make the problem of the bulk, the, the bulk, the public health is more seriously a threat, even when the war is stopped, to deal with all these cases of uh, diseases and uh, the possibility to be spread because of the crowded number in the shelters, because of the uh, polluted environment in the entire streets and around the shelters, and even within the shelter itself. Okay. Hadil, what will it take to repair the environmental damage wrought on, on Gaza? Can, can it ever be repaired? Will it ever be fully habitable again, given the scale of the destruction? Has Israel deliberately tried to make Gaza uninhabitable, do you think? Uh, Israel, from the occupation since day one of to occupy Palestine in general and uh, the, during the last years, trying to make Palestine is unlivable and uninhabitable for Palestinians uh, and, and both West Bank and Gaza. But uh, considering Gaza as being West Bank and Gaza have similar but yet different conditions because both of them have water scarcity problems. But look at Gaza, it's much more 100 million. And during this war, it's it's even uncomparable of the water scarcity, water situation, water limitation, water pollution, uh, water restriction, the fuel restriction, all the aspects of life is being shut down because of the Israeli occupation wants. Basically, the, the, the first thing, the most important thing they want is just to stop life in Gaza Strip and in Palestine as well. Will we able, we believe in, in that spirit in Gazan people and Palestinian people over the days and over the, the centuries, we had the ability to live and rebuild and to resist and to, to continue. But the price is going to be so high. I work in climate action, and we started to plan for for the adaptation and mitigation, and, and our priority is adaptation, because we are a country that situated in the in the MENA region, which is under the negative impact of climate change. When we started to uh, make this uh, adaptation and mitigation plans, we looked at the Israeli occupation as the first uh, hindering and the first uh, challenge that exacerbates the Palestinians' uh, resistance uh, against uh, the climate action. And looking at gas, specifically climate action, un unstable environment because of the nature environment and human-made disasters and the attacks and the genocide and the wars who attacks everything, it, it, it's possible, but it, on what cost? All the plans have to be changed. When we planned for having a, a, a mitigation scenario to uh, for 2040, we had uh, renewable energy to be operated in Gaza for for a certain percent. But now, in what percent? What what is the the plan that that need to be done? Because now we have to start from the zero. We have nothing. We were building uh, nine or five years ago. We were building on what was on the ground uh, for the facilities of energy facilities of water facilities facilities, of uh, sanitation facilities, but now looking at the, on the ground, what is left there? What kind of facilities, what kind of plans? We should replant from the zero, from the scratch, to start to build a city. The whole city is under damage uh, with all the, the components. Um, early, uh, in, in the, in the, before the war, we started to work on early warning systems and having a station, weather station, and forecasting to uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to predict the, the, the um, and enable the uh, agricultural 
financial uh, sector okay. people and all the people to know about yeah. the weather forecasting. But now, what infrastructure we are going mm -hmm. to talk about early warning system while even the basic internet line or anything is missing there. So the environment and is in danger. The climate action is being is okay. hitting Palestine, is hitting Gaza, but uh, right. but the price is going to be uh, uh, multiplied after uh, this uh, war and uh, this uh, attack. Adil, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Time is, is, is fast running out. I just want to put one more question to Nada. Uh, Nada, we talked about, or you talked about, the, 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 the impact that Israel's bombing has had on air quality in Gaza, the use of white phosphorus, uh, the dust from collapsed buildings, some of which will have contained asbestos. Um, what about unexploded ordnance, though? How much of a threat does that pose to public health and rebuilding efforts? And, and with so many buildings destroyed by Israel's bombing, where does all the toxic rubble go when the, the time actually comes to rebuild? Um, th this is a very good question. Uh, we don't know. And uh, when the time comes to rebuild, uh, we would like also to understand uh, what are the conditions of the reconstruction in Gaza and how they will be, and also how much the Israeli government uh, and the, the political setup and the security setup uh, for rebuilding uh, will enable for the rebuilding. Uh, um, uh, first of all, uh, with the lack of space uh, in, in Gaza uh, already, uh, there was uh, difficulty to deal with the solid waste and to deal with, uh, uh, with domestic solid waste. Um, uh, and th there were several plans even uh, before uh, to look into uh, um, uh, basically waste to energy projects and how feasible they are, uh, because already there was a shortage in space uh, because the, uh, Gaza is one of the most uh, condensed uh, and popu uh, populated uh, uh, areas uh, on Earth. Uh, so finding uh, space uh, to deal with all this uh, construction material and waste is, uh, is uh, really questionable. Uh, what I'm thinking is that there's been, uh, as, as Hadil mentioned, uh, we, have, we are a nation that is uh, uh, keen to build and it's, it's keen to, to find and to be innovative, to find solutions. Yep. Uh, there's been uh, several startups okay. uh, in the past All right. uh, to recycle uh, 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 okay. uh, basically the, uh, Nada, the damage and construction material yeah. to utilize it to build again. Nada, I'm, I'm, we're out of time. Many thanks indeed to all of you. Nada, Majdalani, Mawan, Badawil and uh, Hadil Ikhmais. Uh, and thank you for watching. You can see the programme again at any time by visiting our website at aljazeera.com. For further discussion, join us at our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can join the conversation on X, our handle at AJ Inside Story. From me, Adrian Finnegan, and the whole team here in Doha. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again. Bye for now.